Before I start with the topic of this video, which is going to be how to use Luke Bow's Puzzle Generator Excel import file, I have to emphasize that if you are not good with PowerPoint and Excel, if what you see right now on your screen scares you, all these tabs and yellow and red warnings, when you get them, you do not know what to do at all, then I would suggest that you slowly get into this video, pause when needed, and try to follow along, and also ask down below in the comments if anything is not clear. I am not going to hack anything or anyone, but I will be showing you how to use some advanced features of PowerPoint and Excel. Well, not technically advanced, but advanced for most average users. So that would be number one. Number two, this video was requested, but also I was playing around and I discovered something interesting that I will share with you in this video. So everything will be covered. The files I will be using in this video will be available for purchase at my Gumroad store. But if you bought something from me or Look Bows, you will get an email with link to download the files completely free. So do not buy anything before you see will you get an email. So if you purchased anything on Gumroad from me or Look Bows, you will get a link to download all the files for free in your email in maybe one hour, two hour, three hours uh, after this video is released. So just wait until you get the email. Number three. Number three, before I start the actual video, is a question that is keep repeating. Why did I buy Look Bows and Book Publisher Tools, Word Search Puzzle Generators, and also KDP Tools from Gumroad Word Search Puzzle Generator? The reason why I bought all of them is because they have a specific advantages between each other. Look at it this way. You have a freezer and you have a refrigerator. They both technically do the same thing. So if you turn down the power to freezer, it will work as a refrigerator. And if you increase the power to a refrigerator, it will work as a freezer. But there is always a right tool for specific type of job. While Puzzle Maker Pro has its advantages, the PowerPoint file that it generates is not 100% editable. What you get there is PNG image of a puzzle and then down below you have a word list. So PNG image is a table of words that you cannot edit on that slide. Also, when the PowerPoint file is generated by P Puzzle Maker Pro, every shape on the slide has a weird ununiform name. While Luke Baus generator, it generates an actual table that you can edit. And in this video, I'm going to show you why this is important and why there is a benefit when you're working with PowerPoint. This is also something very important when you're working in PowerPoint. Before you start duplicating your slides and making extra slides, make sure that every shape, every object on your slide has a unique name. If it has a unique name in the future, if you want to change anything, if you want to change font, if you want to change color, shape, if you want to delete that specific single part of your PowerPoint presentation, you will be able to do it if that object has a unique specific name. So it all comes down to how you prepare your file before you actually start developing it further, duplicating slides and stuff like that. So let's start with the video. Once you download and install Lookbaus, PowerPoint Puzzle Generator. It will appear as additional tab on the top of the ribbon of your PowerPoint. Now, when it comes to generating puzzles, I'm going to take this slide for example. So when it comes to generating puzzles, it is quite easy. So you pick one of the puzzles here from the top. So let's say I'm going to try Hitori. So click on this one. If you want to have a game explanation, 
before the actual puzzles you can click on that i'm just going to click on that to see to show you how it's going to happen and click on continue and now you have this setting here you can change the colors shades of font and stuff like that so if you click on this then you can change the colors you can change this color as well so if i click on this and change the color that is going to be the color of this selection you can change the font so this section here you can select how many pages you can change the grid dimension how many grids per page do you want it to have left and right margins and how much that margin is going to be so if i click ok right now you see in the back it is generating my puzzles and solutions so this is my explanation so the first page is how to play the puzzle how to uh, play with the game and then i have the puzzles and then in the back i have solutions so that is easy i'm going to undo all of this so when it comes to all these puzzles that are logic puzzles it is easy but then we have a problem with these puzzles here these puzzles like word search crossword missing vowels word scramble cryptogram word puzzle they require that you import your own word list that you provide to the puzzle generator your own words your own clues in order to be able to do this you need to import your words in a specific way using excel sheet that look provides you with this tool and i'm going to show you how that sheet looks like so this is the tool everything that i will explain here in this video is also going to be included in this special powerpoint file that will be delivered to you in form of pdf that also gives you a guide and indication what is each column doing in the entire excel file so you have explanation about everything so let me walk you through the excel file so this is the first sheet we are not going to look at this one at the moment this is where we go at the end of things so next sheet is configuration sheet here at the beginning you have terms used in puzzles so if you delete this section here this is what is going to be used if you type here your own language so your own translation of the levels so these here are levels this is hints answers word question solution across down so all of these are words that are appearing around the puzzle grid if you want to have your own unique words in your own language or different words you need to type them here if you leave this blank it's going to use this words so if you leave this blank it's going to use this word if you type something here it's going to use whatever term you placed here this section here is font list now this font list that you will have when look Bows provides you with the excel file this is not actually a font list of the fonts available in your system the font list is going to be a generic font list so what you need to do is if you want to have a list of all your fonts on your system here what you need to do is i'm going to show you so you need to go to powershell i'm just going to copy this so this text here is also going to be included so you can easily copy it so i'm going to control c so control c this entire text and type here powershell And just click on the first one so windows powershell so click on that and it's all going to open like this Control v so paste that text exactly as it is and click enter and give it a second and what you have now is you have a list of all font names of all the fonts that you have installed on your system now what you need to do next is with your mouse scroll and select all of this all this text just scroll with your mouse all the way up up to here and click on your keyboard Control c so that is to copy all of this now what you need to do is you need to open an excel 
file any excel file doesn't matter and just click Control v so that is now going to paste all your fonts here okay now follow along so now you have all your fonts in excel sheet the next thing that you need to do is we need to remove all the blanks you see we have two blank two blank so select the column a and go to find and select and go to special click on blanks so click on blanks and click ok right click and on any of this now shaded so right click on any of the shaded and click on delete and shift cells up and click ok okay so now we have uh, we removed all the empty blank cells empty rows now the next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, remove the name here so we're going to select this so the name and this uh, colon and control c so i'm just going to copy that find and select and go to replace and now i'm going to paste that here and i'm going to make here leave this empty so replace with nothing so i just want this to be deleted and click on replace all and close and now we removed all of that and now i'm going to select all of this all the fonts that i have control c and i'll go back to look bows and i would paste them here so control v and now you have here the font list of all your fonts on your system now the first one this is something that you need to also remember if you want to have a specific default font you need to put it as a on the first place so for example if i want arial to be my default font i'm going to type that one as first i'm going to keep it here on the list so i don't have to delete it here from the list I'm just going to type it on the first place. So whatever font you type here, the exact name of that font, that is going to be your default font. All the other fonts are going to appear on your drop menu. So that is how you uh, set up your font list. And I'm going to undo all of this because I do not want... This is something that I do. So you do not have to do this. You can also do what I do is I just type the name of the most common fonts that I use when I'm making puzzle books. So I do not need a font, a font list of all the fonts I have on my system. I just type the fonts that I prefer to use when I'm making puzzle books. So when I activate the drop menu in, let me show you. So when I activate the drop menu in Hitori, continue. So you see, when I activate the drop menu here, I'm not going to have 700 fonts. I'm only going to have the fonts that I selected as my preferred fonts. So I don't have to scroll to search for uh, my fonts. I only have the fonts that I prefer. So that is this segment here. This segment here is where you can type your own alphabet letters. So if you have like Spanish, or German or any kind of other letters, any special characters, you can type them here. And here you need to type the vowels from your own language. So you need to type them here. So this is where you can add additional letters. Of course, you can also do something else. If you type numbers here, you can generate number word search puzzle as well so if you change the letters into numbers so that is this second sheet that is labeled config as in configuration and then we have the word search now this excel sheet that i have here that i prepared for myself i'm also going to share this one with you so you can use it to practice with the puzzle generator as well if you want so the, uh, the files are the same. The only difference is that my file is filled with my data. So you can use it the same way as you would use the empty file that Luke provided you with. Or you can copy paste my data into your Excel sheet, the one that you download from your Gumroad library.
So here we have the first column. This is where you passed the words. What is important to note here is that the puzzle generator is going to use the words in the order you place them here. So it's not going to scramble them. So if I am creating puzzles with 10 words, these 10 words that are here are going to be in the first puzzle. This is going to be in the second puzzle. This is going to be in the third puzzle. So directly in this order as they are typed here. So this is why it is important to have a randomizer of the words before you paste them here. So if you paste them here alphabetically, they're going to appear in the puzzles alphabetically. If you, for the word search puzzle, do not want to use words, as clues what to find you can also use questions so you can replace instead of archery you can have this and then the person needs to know what is the word in order to be able to find it in the puzzle grid uh, it is important that when you are pasting that if you have clues and words when you're pasting them here that you are matching the word with the clue word with the clue because it's going to match these two data together in this column, you need to type titles. So let's say I have 100 words and I want each puzzle to have 10 words. If I have 100 words, 100 divided with 10 is 10. So that means this puzzle generator is going to generate 10 puzzles maximum. So that means I need to have 10 titles here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 titles. If you have 600 words and you have 6 words per puzzle, that means you need to have 100 titles because you're going to have 100 puzzles. And the last feature is if you want to create missing words or hidden word, word search puzzle, then here you need to provide the list. But this is important information for any word search puzzle generator if you want to use the hidden or mystery word feature. You need to provide the system with a lot of words. So if you have 100, 150 words and just a couple of missing words or hidden words, the system is not going to work. You need to provide minimum 200 words and minimum 100, 200 hindered word options, so puzzle generator has something to work with. The less words you provide, the less chances it's going to be able to generate a valid puzzle. So you need to think 300, 600, 1000 words, and also 500, 800, and more hidden words. So it has options to mix between the words. So that will be for the word search sheet. So let's go to crossword. For crossword, first here you type the clues or you copy paste the clues and here are the answers that are going to appear in the puzzle. And now the same thing here. So if you have 100 questions and 100 answers and you want to have 5 words per crossword or 10 words per crossword, then you need to have equal amount of titles. So Take your words, divide them as per words per puzzle, and that number is how many titles you need to have. So that is what we have here. For cryptogram, you have the puzzle here. So this is the actual cryptogram, and this is the author or clue that you can type in. For word scramble, this one is a little bit tricky, so that's why I shaded it. So you do not have to shade it. This is just for your visual representation. This is a list of words that it is going to scramble on one page. And this is the label that that page is going to have. So this is fruit. And everything that I listed here, it's going to be under fruit. So here in this column, you need to type the title of this word section here. So this section here, the first word is here, this one. So all of this up to this row, this is going to be under vegetable, under this section here. So you can have this section one, 10, 20, 30 words, and then you can type another 
title here if you want but it is important that you just type the entry of the first word next to that you type the title of that uh, section so that is how you prepare your uh, word scramble excel and then the last one is missing vowels so here you can have uh, the word that is going to be presented and then here you need to give title to that puzzle so this is a puzzle and this is the puzzle title this is the puzzle and this is the puzzle title so each word is actually one small puzzle so that is how you prepare the excel for missing vowels once you have finished with everything go to main so you don't have to do if, if for example you just want to do word search you don't have to worry about everything else so you can just fix the word search part and go to main and click submit once you click submit it's going to give you this so all data sheets exported as csv files click ok and now you can go to puzzle generator and now we can generate words puzzles so puzzles with words so i'm going to start with word search i'm going to try one of each i'm going to click on continue if you want to use hidden word you can only use that with the first two options you cannot use hidden word with this lower section here so i'm going to use the first one click ok and now this grids letter font features so this is the setup for what is going to be inside the puzzle color black so you can set it here if you want to change the color of the circle around the solution click on this here and now you can change the color so we are going to change the color to i'm going to show you pink so you can see it's changing and go back to gray and now it's gray so now everything that is a solution in my word search puzzle is going to be circled with gray shade shape so i can x i can close that up then you can set the font size of the letters inside the puzzle grid that is here here you can change the header font size so that is the title of the puzzle this is a font size for the words uh, words list that is going to be under the puzzle grid and this is where you can set up how many rows and how many columns how many words per puzzle do you want them sorted alphabetically so the word list to be sorted alphabetically or the way it was typed in excel i want it to be sorted alphabetically and how many tries per word you don't have to go overboard i keep this uh, at 10000 but if you want to put higher you can do that as well here you can set the difficulties so directions usually uh, the easy puzzle for children is moving from left to right so all the uh, all the right options and for heavier puzzles the left options and also diagonals as well you can add margins i, I like to keep my margins a little bit higher so i have a room to move my puzzle around and also solution grids here you can change how uh, the solution is going to be presented this option is the best and also the thickness i like to be uh, highly visible so i'm going to pick thick here i do not want to hide titles and i want to hide the word list in solution pages so there is absolutely no need for words to appear in the solution pages so i'm going to do that here and i'm not going to use missing words for this one because i do not have enough words and i'm going to click ok so once i click ok it's going to generate 100 puzzles and the reason why it's going to generate 100 puzzles is because i have 600 words with six words per puzzle so if i click ok and let it run it's going to do that it's going to generate puzzles so let's see how long it's going to take if you have this if this happens that means that your puzzle grid 
is smaller than the amount of letters in your highest letter word in your list. So my puzzle grid is 12 by 10. But if in my list I have a couple of words with 12 letters, it's going to cause this. It's not going to have space to place them. So if I want to give him another chance to shuffle the words around and try again, I will click yes. And usually it's going to continue. So if I made my grid 14 by 12, this uh, would not happen. Because when you have 14 and all the words are 12 letter words, then it has extra room to place them. But if you have 12, so that means all your diagonals are also 12. So that means it is restricted where he can place the 12 letter words. Let's start here with a new slide. Let's delete everything from the slide. And I'm going to try to generate the next puzzle. Next puzzle is crossword. So I'm going to click on that one. Click on continue. I'm going to keep the row number 20 and column number 20. If you are just starting with using this puzzle generator, start with uh, 20 rows and 20 columns. And I'm going to have words per puzzle 10 and tries per grid, I'm going to increase it to 1500. Uh, I like to have all this checked, but if you do not want to do that, you can see what all of this, you see you have a question mark. So when you hover above the question mark, it is explaining you what each of the feature is doing. So first one is words list in same page as grids. So if you want to have word list on one page and puzzle on the right page, you would uncheck this. But I want to have word list on the same page uh, as grids. If you want to shuffle words to improve fit, um, in most cases you would want to do that. So click this, have this checked. And if you want to have uh, left and right, so mirror margins, click this. Also, this is something that should be automatically checked, that it automatically scales the grid to your slide size. If you want to have a specific margin size in inches, you would type that here. And also here, the usual font size and font selection. So I'll click OK and let it uh, run. Now, I do not have a lot of clues. I only have a couple of clues. So it should generate maybe one or two, maybe three puzzles maximum because I do not have a lot of clues. Now, when it comes to a crossword puzzle generator, as you can see, it is a little bit slower than uh, word search. It could it could take him longer to generate. So in that case, just give it a time because crossword takes longer to generate than word search puzzle. It is more complicated to generate crossword puzzle than uh, word search puzzle. So just give it uh, maybe 10, 15, 30 minutes, especially if you have like 10, 50 puzzles to generate. So if you uh, placed 100, 200, 300 clues, so give him time. So usually it's going to show you this at the end. Uh, you, you can just ignore this, click end, because it is going to generate the last puzzle because I gave him, this is my error, this is not error of the program, I gave him 41 words, as you can see, or 31 words, and I gave him 10 words per puzzle. So if he has 31 words, it generated three puzzles, as you can see, so 10 words, 10 words, 10 words, and then there's only one word, for puzzle number four. So that is why it returned error. So I can delete this slide because it's my mistake. So this is how the puzzle looks like. And I can scroll all the way down to show you the solution. So this is how solution looks like. So that would be the crossword puzzle generator. And you see here, it says across and down. So this is that uh, configuration setting. So if you want to have your own word here on your own language, that is where you set this up. So you don't set this up in the actual crossword Excel part, you set up in the main configuration settings. So let's start with another slide, new slide, delete everything from the slide. Make sure there is nothing on the slide before you use puzzle generator. 
Let's check the next one. Missing vowels. Continue. Words alignment center. Columns number maximum is two. Then we're going to do the left. The font. The titles. I do not want to hide titles. Everything is the same. And click OK. And let it run. And as you can see, it's going to generate in the background puzzles and solutions. So let's see what we're going to get. Missing vowels. So this is how the puzzle looks like for the missing vowels. You have the list of words. What I would usually do is I'm going to click on this, go to home, and I would increase the spacing to give it extra room. And now the missing line indicates that somebody has to write down all the missing vowels here. And this is the title of the puzzle. So animal one, animal two, animal three. Let's go. What's next? Seven, eight, nine, ten. So I had ten animals enough for ten puzzles. And then at the end, always the solution are going to be on the end of uh, the presentation. Let's make new slide, delete everything, puzzle generator, puzzles, words, scramble. Let's click on that one, continue, font selection, show grid lines, so that is the table around the letters, column number per page, so I just want one, Adapt presentation width and height to fit the grid. So I do not want presentation to change width and height. I want the grid to adapt to my slide. So that is OK. And let's see what I'm going to get. OK, so let's see. You see here the title is fruit. And here I have my 10 fruits that I select. And then I should have vegetable. And I have my 10 vegetables. And then I have sports. And then I have my 10 sports scrambled. And here you need to place them unscrambled. So what is this? Let me zoom in. So what is this? You need to unscramble that here. And on the last slide, I should have solutions. That is here. Okay. Let's go back home new slide let's change so you can see it delete everything from the slide puzzle generator what else we have cryptogram continue font selection clue source font size cryptogram is the title so if you type something else that's going to be the title above your cryptogram show source uh, so if you want the source to be normal encrypt be hidden in the grids and if you want all hidden this is where you select that if you want to sort them by length if you want to show grid hide and the start numbering let's just see what's going to happen with the default settings and click ok so let's see what's going to happen in the background with our cryptograms. OK, click OK. So this is our cryptogram. This is that clue that we provided. It was the author of the of this saying. And this is how cryptogram looks like. So you could give him an option to make two or three cryptograms per page as well. You see this one is a big one. It almost fills entire page while this one is small. It can fit easily here under this one. So that is how you generate cryptograms. And that's it. So those are the all the puzzles that are using words that you provide into the system, into the Excel sheet. So I'm going to go now back. You see now it is telling me that I cannot create puzzle because the slide I'm using, it's not blank slide. I need to have a blank slide in order to create word search puzzle. So now I'm going to go back to this Excel sheet, to this word search uh, area here. Now, how I'm going to 
copy paste the words here so they are scrambled. So this is now part of the video where I'm going to show you what you're going to get inside that folder that will be available in Gumroad. So now I'm going to show you what is actually happening. Here where it says list of words, this is where you need to copy paste your words, all your words. So let's say you have 100 words. If you have 100 words, then you need to delete all the numbers here when, where you do not have words. So these numbers here, you can easily generate them. If you, for example, tomorrow you want to have more uh, words. So if, for example, I delete all of this, so I only have 12 words, then if you want tomorrow use the same Excel sheet, just click on this corner and drag the formula down because this is a formula and it's going to generate random numbers. So this second column here, so this second column here is actually a formula that is generating random numbers. The reason why this is important is because we need to shuffle these words here randomly. There is no way you can shuffle this without this section here. So now, once you copy paste your list of words here, as you can see here, it is now alphabetical. You need to select these two. You see here, step one, select first two columns. So select them like this. Step two, go to data and go to sort. And now you need to replicate what is here. Sort by round formula. It is going to give you because there is a title above the column here. And then it says here automatically cell values. If it's not automatically uh, selected here from the drop menu. And smallest to largest. And click OK. And do you see now the list has been shuffled. So if you would repeat this procedure again. So here click OK, it's once again going to shuffle all your words. So this is how you can shuffle your list of words. So just copy paste your words here, select all of this, sort and click OK. And it's going to shuffle your words. Just make sure that the amount of words you have. So once you have the last word here, delete all the extra values here. So do not use them because if you use them, you're going to have empty spaces. So when the words stop, let's scroll all the way down. So when your word list stops on the right, you should not have nothing. You should delete everything on the right. So that is how you randomize your word list. And then you would select it, select everything and copy paste it here. If you have matching clues, you can do that also by pasting the clues here as well. If you have clues with your words, then you need to use this one. So this is the next sheet. So type your words, copy paste your words and next to that type their clues. Then you need to select all three, so all three, you see here, three uh, columns and go to sort. And once again, we're going to select uh, round formula. So that column to be the one that is going to shuffle everything else. And if I click OK, it's going to let's find, see, accommodate and accommodate clue is going to match to this one. And then you can copy paste the first two columns back to the look bows sheet. So let's undo that. So you can see it, they are actually here. So that is how you randomize your list of words. You can use the Excel, this Excel sheet, to randomize your uh, words. And now we come to the important part. I'm going to provide you with this special PowerPoint file that you need to have open after you generate your word search puzzles. So we have our word search puzzle. So this one here, we have it here. Once you open the file, click enable content. If it's still not letting you, if it's giving you, where is it? If it's giving you a red warning, what you need to do is you need to close down the PowerPoint file, uh, right click 
on that PowerPoint file and it's going to open up properties. Under properties, click unblock, unblock, because PowerPoint file is going to have macros. It's going to have macros inside. So in order to use them, you need to unblock them. So that is the first thing that you need to do. Now, you need to have this PowerPoint. So the, this, the name of this PowerPoint is called Word Search Special Delete Letters PowerPoint file. You need to have it open, physically open, when you are trying to modify this puzzle book that we just generated. So this is the puzzle book that we just generated. It is a Father's Day uh, word search puzzle collection, 100 puzzles, six words per puzzle. So this is a typical word search puzzle, easy puzzle for children. And I'm going to show you how you can improve it, how you can change it up and make it an advanced version once you already have the puzzles ready. So if you go to this file here, uh, important thing with the Lookbouse generator, it, uh, important information is where it's generating puzzles inside PowerPoint, each element on slide has a unique name. So if I go to this presentation that was generated with, uh, with the puzzle generator, if I click on uh, selection pane. So if you click on anything here, you're going to have here shape format and selection pane. So click on selection pane to see, to see it here. You see that every segment here has a unique name. So there's, and it's logical name. It's not just random name. It's a logical name. Word title. This is a title. Word search. This is a word search. Word search words. This is a word search segment. So the puzzle grid with letters of the puzzle, the name of that shape is word search. This is important. Now let's go back to my presentation. Now I'm going to show you how you can remove vowels from all puzzles. So these are the steps that we need to follow. First, we need to generate word search puzzles are shown in this video. So that, that is something that we already did. Then we need to click on developer tab to activate it. So let's do that. So let's click on developer tab to activate it. And now we need to select all the slides. So let's scroll to slide 100. So slide 100 and go back to number one. Hold the shift key. So hold the shift key and then on click on number one. And now you will see everything between one and 100 has been selected. So 100 and number one and everything between slides are selected. Now click on macros, click on macros and click on that presentation that I told you to keep it open. So word search special delete letters PowerPoint file and click on delete letters from table. So click on this macro here and click run. It is going to ask you enter the name of the table. The reason why I did this, if you are generating your own puzzles, if you have some other tools that are also generating word search puzzles like this, like this, similar to this program in PowerPoint, but maybe they have a different name of the shape, you can still use this macro. So this is not just for look bows, you can still use it for something else as well. So enter the name of the table shape. So that would be word search. Make sure that you type exactly how it is with capital letter first. Word search, that's the name of the shape of the table with letters. Click OK. And now it is asking us to list the letters that we would like to delete. That would be all the vowels. We need to type them in with comma and space in between. So you do not have to put comma behind the last letter. So all the vowels, the order does, is not important. So click OK. And now it's asking us an interesting question. Do you want to delete all except provide letters or numbers? So if I click yes, it is going to delete everything except the vowels. If I click no, it is going to delete the vowels.
The reason why I added this option is maybe you want to delete some other letters, not just vowels. So instead of typing all the letters to delete, you can type all the letters to keep as well. So you have both options. So you can type the letters to keep and then select yes here, or type all the letters to delete and then select no here. And I'm going to just let it run. Give it a couple of seconds. It's working in the background. And it's finished. And if you look now, the solution is still the same. Let's, let's scroll down because we didn't select the solution slides. Solution is still correct. But if you go back to the puzzle, the puzzle grid now is missing the vowels. And now this is making the puzzle slightly harder to solve. So now all these words needs to be found inside the puzzle grid, but they also need to, whoever is solving it, also needs to write down inside the puzzle, it needs to write down all the vowels. So that is option number one, how to make unique puzzles from the puzzles that you already generated. So the first version of the puzzle would be for one book, you can use that in one book, and then another book you can use this version as well, or you can mix them up. So this is the version without vowels. Now I'm going to undo what I just did here. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear what we just did. We just removed the vowels. As you can see, there are no vowels anymore inside the puzzle grid. And if I undo everything, it's going to go back to original. And now I'm going to use the second macro. For the second macro, you don't have to select the slides. And I'm going to once again select my presentation. And that would be this one here. Delete letters with TXT file. In order to use this macro, I need to prepare the TXT file. I also prepared Excel for this as well. Now, try to follow me here. Here, you need to pass the words that you're going to use in word search puzzle. So the same thing that you have in the Excel for the puzzle generation, you need to have that here as well. Or you can start from here and copy paste this list into Excel for uh, Luke Bow's puzzle generator. So this is the list of words, exactly the same as in that Excel sheet. Now, if you paste it here, it says here 638 mixer, and you also have 727 mixer. These two uh, sheets is where you have uh, 638 words for Father's Day. So everything is ready for Father's Day. If you want to type your own words, you can do that. So, what we need to do here is, we have this list of words, and this is what we're going to use in the puzzle generator. And now, this is a trick here. What this Excel sheet is doing, it is extracting the first letter of each word. Do you see? First letter of each word is extracted. So, that's the first part. So, this is the formula. So, you do not have to do this. This is done automatically here. So this, from this segment here, this is all done automatically. You do not have to do anything here. Once you type your words, this is going to be done automatically. So once you have this section here solved, you will have this list here. If you have six words per puzzle, this is going to work. So I prepared everything for six words per puzzle. If you want to have different amount of words, you need to be able to know how to adjust the formula here and adjust this Excel file. So that is what I said at the beginning of this video. You need to have advanced knowledge of Excel if you want to go deeper into all of this. So, or, you can, or if you just want to use six words per puzzle, you can use my file. I'm just showing you capabilities. If you are good with Excel, uh, I believe this is already blowing your mind about what you can do. So here I have the first six letters of the first six words. That is puzzle one. Puzzle two, the next, you see, W, B, F, V, P, U. So those are the first letters of the second set of six words uh, inside the puzzle two. So what I need to do now is I need to copy all of this. I have 600 words, so that means I have 100 puzzles. 
So I'm going to select this and I'm going to click Control C, Control C, and I'm going to paste them in a Notepad. So this is how it's going to look like in Notepad. So this is Notepad, and I just paste those letters here directly from Excel. I have, you see here, line. I have 100 lines. That means it's correct. And I'm going to save this text file with some name. It doesn't matter. The name is not important. Just save it somewhere where you can easily find it. This is what we need. We need to have each row showing us the first letter of the words that are being used inside the puzzle. And let's close this up. And now, once we have that file, we can click this one, delete letters with text, and click on Run. So what's going to happen now? Once again, it is asking us the name of the shape, word search. Click OK. Enter start slide number. So now it's giving us, because maybe you have a couple of slides here, a couple of slides down. So now you need to give him as many rows in text file you have. That is how many slides you need to provide. So my puzzle starts with slides, slide 1 and ends with slide 100. So that is going to give me my 100 rows. And click OK. And now it is asking you for location of that text file. So you need to find that text file wherever you stored it. So this is for me, so father one. If you get this error, just cancel it. It doesn't matter. It is Microsoft going bananas in the background, but that's not our problem. We are doing what we want to do and click OK. And then let it run. Do not do anything. Just let it uh, run. It's going to take him maybe a minute or two. And once it's finished, it's going to give you a pop-up uh, window that it has deleted all the letters from the puzzle. So now what you have from the same set of puzzles that you generated, you have option number one normal word search puzzle, option number two, word search without vowels, and now option number three, missing first letter of the word. You can also flip it. You can also flip it and you, you can delete all the letters that are not the first letter. So keep the first letters and delete everything else. But then you need to have substantially more words in the puzzle to make it unique. So this option works when you have just six words. So now if I want to find a door, a door, that means the letter A is not going to be anywhere in the grid. So that means I need to look for D. So D O R. So this could be A D O R E. So this could this is a potential, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the correct placement. So I can try it and see what the rest of the puzzle is going to give me. Hike is going to be very hard because it's just four little words. So it could be here, hike, but maybe it's also somewhere else in the grid. So that means they need to fill up the grid with words, with missing letters, before they actually solve the puzzle as well. So that is another variation of, uh, of the puzzle. So I'm just going to go back through this. So this, this is my tutorial. PDF that's going to be uh, attached to the file in my Gumroad store. So here you have a step-by-step -step guide where everything that I did. So select delete letters from the table. Then you have a screenshot of everything I did with guide. So you can, if you don't have internet, if you do not want to watch the video again, and then you have the solution, what's going to happen. This is the original puzzle, and this is how the puzzle is going to look like. So this would be option number one. And then you have a step-by-step -step guide how to prepare option number two. So for option number two, you need to have a text file with all the first letters of all the words that you're going to use in the puzzle. Keep in mind that this is calibrated for six words per puzzle. If you want to do more, then you need to adjust. You need to create your own Excel file with your own formula that is going to extract uh, the first letters of the word. But all my formulas are uh, free. 
So you see here, let me, can I zoom in? I cannot zoom in, but see the formula. So this entire Excel sheet is unprotected. So you can see everything. So nothing is hidden. You can see everything. Uh, you can check everything up to see what is happening and how to adjust them. So you have everything here completely open. So if you are good with Excel, or you can also ask ChatGPT to guide you how to improve this if you want to have more words or less words and then generate similar puzzles. So let me, where is the file? So here you see I have, I took a screenshot of everything to guide you as you go through, uh, through the process of creation. And then I am showing you the end file as well. So if you have any questions ask me down below i know this is quite complicated but as i said if you are good with excel if you are good with powerpoint i hope this has opened up your horizon what you can do with lookbouse puzzle generator because it is generating puzzles inside powerpoint and because of the uh, vba system and because of the macros and because uh, all that uh, concept it is giving us freedom to upgrade and change up our puzzles with uh, unlimited options. I can also change fonts to this one. I can make this. Where is my... Uh, where is my... I can do this so it can become a, a shape or icon search puzzle. So let's see. Do I have a better shapes, better looking shapes? You see this one, this is also great. This font is free, so sign language. So you can do that as well because the puzzle grid that is generated by the look box is not PNG image, but is actually a table that you can modify. So you can have this. So this would be your first puzzle for your one book. And then you change the font. You change the font and you have the same set of puzzles uh, but completely different concept, different style. So that is also something to consider. Plenty of more options for you to explore. I'm just going to end the video because it's already too long. I have to edit it now. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked the video. If you if you did, like, don't forget to like it. Subscribe to my channel because I have more ideas coming up. This is just, this is literally something that I came up with three days ago. And with the macros, with the help of ChatGPT and Luke Bows, I created the macros as well. And Excel file I generated myself because I'm good in Excel. I, I'm better in Excel than in PowerPoint, strange enough. But uh, yeah, this is just what you just saw. This is the result of three days work. And I have uh, generated a couple of different styles with the same puzzle collection that I already have. Yeah. Thank you everybody for watching, stay safe, take care, until next video I'll see you down below in the comments. Bye!